Well, the brain is something that's developed over millennia. And so there are three main parts to the brain if we're looking at it this way. So there's the reptile brain or the lizard brain, which helps keep your heart going, your breathing, breathing, basically your body working. And that's there to keep us safe and keep us alive. Then there's the limbic system, which is sort of the middle of the brain, which deals with your emotions, your responses, your behaviours. There's a very important little part of the limbic brain called the amygdala, which is sort of like a tiger detector. It detects danger in our environment and sets everything else into motion to help us run away from it or fight it. Then there's the prefrontal cortex, which is our more human brain, which is where we think and plan and inhibit and consider things. When someone has been traumatised early on in their life or when someone's in an acutely stressful situation, it's sort of like the focus narrows and sometimes your prefrontal cortex doesn't even talk to your limbic system. Your focus is entirely on outrunning the predator or eating the prey or just keeping safe. So there's not much point in trying to talk someone out of an acute stress reaction because they really can't hear you or can't apply it to how they feel. It's often better to look at sort of a bottom-up approach, if you like, soothing the brainstem or body first. So getting warm, feeling safe and speaking almost directly to their limbic system. So it'll be the tone of your voice which is important rather than the actual words that you're using. Vivette Glover, who's a researcher at, or she certainly was at, Imperial College in London, did research on the impact of stress during a pregnancy on the offspring. And they found that this particular window between 18 and 21 weeks was critical. So they, I guess, looked at amount of stress during the course of a pregnancy and found that the impact on the offspring was most during that time. And that's probably related to maternal cortisol levels having some impact on the developing baby's brain and possibly developing baby's own cortisol production or response or cortisol response to stress. And so those babies who were stressed in utero during that critical window were found to be less resilient to stress when they came out. That's a difficult one because of course you don't want to unduly worry an already anxious person. If they come to see you, I guess, earlier on in pregnancy, talking about planning to ensure that that time is maybe doesn't have a lot of projects at work or speaking in public um, or anything like that. Looking at working on their own stress management strategies such as meditation, pregnancy yoga, looking after themselves, moderate exercise, perhaps scheduling a massage for during that time as massage was actually shown to be helpful in modulating maternal stress. Um, if they come to see you just after that critical period and are highly stressed, I probably wouldn't add to their stress further by drawing their attention to the issues, but just look at trying to manage their distress in preparation for actually having the baby. I guess our training, well certainly when I was training, was all about looking after other people rather than looking after ourselves. But of course we are actually the instrument of our job. It's us who looks after the woman and, and her family. So keeping yourself in good nick is really important. I think we need to acknowledge that 
a significant proportion of us will have had our own issues with trauma or adverse childhood events and may be at risk of being vicariously traumatised by events in our work life. So just acknowledging this that we are human and may find ourselves unaccountably distressed. Making sure that we eat well, that we get enough sleep and that we have some sort of general, um, I guess, sort of management strategy for our own stress. Keeping our parasympathetic nervous system operational. So there's been good research to show that yoga is helpful. Breathing is really important. Just taking in a deep breath and breathing all the way out can actually help ground and settle you in a stressful circumstance. Tapping is another interesting modality. It's it's based on something called energy field therapies which were developed for dealing with post-traumatic stress disorder but actually just tapping over your vagus nerve you can do this with patients as well as with yourself can actually soothe and settle you down a bit like holding a baby and rhythmically patting their back I guess one of the most important things is looking at just doing what comes naturally as a human, relying on your mirror neurons to give you the right facial expressions and ability to modulate their own distress, as you do for a child when you're empathetically responding to their distress. It's important to remember partly to reassure yourself that what you say probably isn't actually all that important because you're speaking directly to their limbic system and brainstem rather than to their prefrontal cortex. So it's your tone and your attitude and your presence which are more important than the actual words that you use. It's also really important to maintain a calm and competent presence because Feeling that the person who's supposed to be looking after them is panicking is hugely scary for people. You can always debrief afterwards and generally if you rely on your training and your own competence, you'll do fine. You can debrief afterwards. It's also important to know that you can always go back and talk through what happened later with the person. But remember your mirror neurons are talking to her limbic system. So one thing that's a really good idea, the more anxious, wound up and stressed you are, it's a good idea to slow your speech down, to lower your tone and to say please and thank you a lot. One of the other concerns, other than panic in the birth attendance, is that women don't feel listened to. That's something that can contribute significantly to trauma. So even if you know that whatever she's concerned about is fine, rather than saying, don't worry about it, you're fine, ask just things like, what do you think might be going on? Or can you tell me a bit more about it? Just so that, A, it gives you more information and also allows her to feel heard.